In elementary science, we've gathered a lot of knowledge about the continents and their history. How the continents as we know them exist the way they are today and the role that continental drift played in this. However, what if we told you another historical geological event might be upon our planet? A new ocean is being formed in Africa as we speak. Where and how is this happening? Watch this video till the end to get the full details. Recently, Kenya's Great Rift Valley has become an area of interest to individuals worldwide, specifically scientists. The never-ending exploratory activities in this region are triggered by the fact that it is the region where Africa, the second largest continent in the world, is gradually dividing into two as a result of natural forces. An event of this extent hasn't been recorded for a couple of million years, and the last of its kind marked the division of South America and Africa into two different continents. On a lighter note, the site resulting from this split, Kenya's Great Rift Valley, is a choice site for tourists traveling to East Africa to witness the phenomenon firsthand. The division of the African continent into two became very obvious in 2005. This division originated from the emergence of a rift in the Ethiopian desert, which is 35 miles long at the moment, as stated by geological research charts. According to scientists, this division in the African continent started long before 2005 and will eventually lead to the continent splitting into two parts with an ocean in between. Geologists examining the tectonic plates of Africa over time also validate that 54 countries on the continent are splitting and will eventually become two separate landmasses. Kenya's Great Rift Valley stretches from northern Ethiopia through the Mozambique and is the dividing line separating countries like Somalia, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Mozambique, Djibouti, Kenya, and Tanzania from the remaining parts of Africa. That said, this division of continents is usually caused by the movement of tectonic plates, leading to the separation of land in a process called rifting. Simply put, rifting is a phenomenon where one tectonic plate is broken up into two or more plates divided by a type of tectonic plate boundary known as the divergent plate boundary. Rifting causes the formation of a lowland where the tectonic plates have broken apart and can be seen on land or on the ocean floor. And this phenomenon of rifting is what led to the formation of the Red Sea in time past. Usually, the formation of continents from this process occurs at a gradual rate of about a fraction of an inch per year. However, scientists have now discovered through GPS tracking that this movement has been happening much faster in recent times. A report published by the National Journal found that the two continental landmasses in Africa are tearing apart at a rate of about 7 millimeters per year. This movement might result in landlocked countries like Uganda, Malawi, Burundi, Rwanda, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and Zambia eventually having their own coastlines. In addition, scientists have also discovered that active volcanoes in East Africa play an important part in the continental splitting. Such active volcanoes include the ancient Odonyo Lenge volcano in Tanzania and the Alu Dalapia in Ethiopia. These volcanoes provide new insights and information on studies around the continental split. The Urta Ale volcano in Ethiopia is another example of an active volcano in East Africa that has continuously erupted for over 50 years. Another notable phenomenon that geologists investigating the rift site have observed is that there are various underground activities in the area, which could also contribute to the Earth's division. Centering around this fact, scientists discovered the Victoria microplate, situated between both sides of the rift. This is the largest microplate on Earth and has been rotating counterclockwise for more than two years. Formation of a new ocean from the continental split For the layman, it may not be as easy to understand how the Earth's movement can impact the ocean's size. However, suppose you understand how the continents were formed or the concept of the continental drift. In that case, the concept of formation, expansion, and movement of the world's oceans may become clearer. More on the continental drift. Christopher Moore, a PhD student in the School of Earth's Environment at the University of Leeds in the UK, observed the red haze from a lava flow a few kilometers away on the top of a large volcano and noticed something unusual. 
He realized that certain movements of the earth, which should not be ignored, were responsible for these behaviors and were the first signs of tectonic transitions to occur in the next 5 to 100 million years. As a result, he anticipated that the area would vastly change. The phenomenon that explains the ocean floor's expansion is also a part of the continental drift theory, known as seafloor spreading. In this phenomenon, when a divergent plate boundary splits apart and spreads out, volcanic activities give room for forming a new ocean floor at the area where the split is created. Splitting occurs in the lithosphere due to tensional stress when the ocean plates move away from each other. The force from tectonic plate slab pull at subduction zones drives the spreading of seafloor ridges. The activity of magma is typically high at these ridges, and gravity causes plates that are not subducting to slide off the elevated mid-ocean ridges, a process known as ridge push. Hence, basaltic magma rises up the fractures at a spreading center and cools on the ocean floor, creating a new seabed. Generally, rocks formed from this process get older as one moves away from the spreading zone, while younger rocks are closer to the spreading zone. Slight changes in the elevation of the Earth and associated with plate tectonics that can be observed from a mountaintop today were much more observable and significant in the past. That said, the barren area in East Africa that bordered the Red Sea is covered in lava that resulted from the rupture of the Earth at the convergence of the Nubian, Somali, and Arabian tectonic plates. This area is a trijunction with the Ethiopian Plateau, the Red Sea, and Eritrea forming a large Y-shaped structure on the surface of the Earth's crust. Also, the Great Rift Valley which it forms stretches over 4,000 miles into the heart of Africa to the south, while the Red Sea extends to the northwest and the Aden Ridge, an oceanic ridge, stretches to the east. These tectonic activities are more than enough evidence that the African continent is going through a process of splitting apart. Today, if someone were to stand on a mountaintop, they would only notice small changes in millimeters. However, those changes would have been much more significant in the past when the land was bare. In addition, the area in East Africa that is covered in lava was created by the continental split, which occurred at the triple junction where Nubian, Somali, and Arabian tectonic plates intersected and adjacent to the Red Sea, which is sparsely populated. For the past three decades, the Somali plate in East Africa has been gradually separating from the rest of the continent. This led to a rift valley in Ethiopia and Eritrea, and divided into the Kenya Rift before rejoining in the Malawi Rift. By examining the chain of lakes that line the bottom of the Great Rift Valley, such as Lakes Tanganyika and Nyasa, it's possible to trace the divided continent on a map. At the same time, the Arabian Plate has been pulling away from Africa as the Red Sea Rift expands to approximately one centimeter annually. Soon enough, the Arabian Plate will halt after it collides with the Eurasian Plate in modern-day Iran. The significant geological changes the Earth's crust is experiencing are the prequels of this event. These geological changes include the formation of a new ocean basin and the continent's division. The Afar region is located in the center of these transformations and is being separated from Eurasia by the closing of the Persian Gulf. This region has created some of the world's largest volcanoes due to the prominence of tectonic activity around this region. The mixture of extensive basalt and silica lava flows that overlay the Great Rift Valley has led to the development of bimodal volcanism and explosive eruptions. Speaking of volcanic eruptions, East Africa is home to various types of volcanoes. Just towards the northern part of the Red Sea, there are large basaltic shield volcanoes like Erta, Ale, while the south is characterized by the enormous Corbeti caldera in Ethiopia. Some of the most unpredictable volcanoes in the world can be found in this area. As we move further into Africa, there are unusual sites, such as the old Daniolingo volcano in Tanzania, which spews carbonatite. To the east of DR Congo are twin volcanoes, Nea Miraja and Nyera Gango to the west. These volcanoes contribute to the active seismic activity beneath East Africa. The Afar region is a significant focal point for a geological activity, and a possible reason for this is that the area has been heated from beneath by the Afar plume. This same plume 
caused the African continent to rise and break apart more than 80 million years ago, forming rift valleys. Similar processes were observed when the North Atlantic Ocean was formed, which connected a substantial mantle plume to create new continental fault lines. As a result, two continental margins were separated by the spread of the seafloor at mid-ocean ridges. It has been discovered that Erta Ale is still in a transitioning phase. The transformation into an oceanic spreading center will become more apparent within the next 5 million years, as lava eruptions create streaks along the edges and record Earth's magnetic field. Nevertheless, the shift towards an oceanic spreading center will occur gradually. The area indicates shallow magma storage, but a genuine ocean crust has yet to form. Thus, the future of tectonic activity in this region remains to be determined. It is uncertain when the region will transition into an ocean spreading center, whether an ocean spreading basin will develop between the Somali and Nubian plates, and how the spreading process will occur in the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. Geologic records indicate that the Earth was formed 4.5 billion years ago, followed by the continental crust 3.2 billion years ago, and then the creation of the continental shelf as molten rocks pushed up through the Earth's surface, eventually forming the supercontinent. Tectonic plates constantly change, with some sliding against each other along fault lines and others colliding. At the same time, some plates are moving apart at divergent plate boundaries, which has contributed to the formation of today's continents, including Africa, Europe, Asia, South America, North America, and Australia. Here's where we wrap things up. Kindly share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more amazing content.